What's up, everybody? It's your boy Nate. Today we have a super stacked episode because a bunch of crazy stuff has just come out. We're talking about Hunyuan from Tencent, their brand new open source video generation model. We're also going to be diving into Google's DeepMind's latest preview, which is Genie 2, super, super crazy, large scale foundational model for not just simulating game engines, actually. Even though it looks like a game engine, this is simulating an entire world. And then lastly, we're going to be covering the latest developments from OpenAI, which is the release of their O1 and their O1 Pro mode. A lot of crazy stuff, so let's dive right in. <laughs> okay, so first up, take a look at this video. This is all AI-generated video, but you've probably seen already some super dope stuff coming out from Sora or even Runway, except none of those are open source, so you can't actually run them on your computer locally. Whereas this one from Tencent, they're kind of taking a big stab at that open source AI development community by releasing this model entirely open source, so you can train your own weights on this you can end up doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. And in fact, we've already been playing around with this in Comfy UI, setting up all sorts of workflows. So here, I'm gonna take a look at some of these examples to show you just what it's capable of. If you guys have followed Tencent's open source releases in the past, you may have noticed that they're really killing it when it comes to open source stuff. So they've released film and animation models. They've also released game development models and even ones for VR and AR. So a lot of crazy, interesting stuff, but I don't think none of it works nearly as well on consumer grade hardware yet, like the Hanyuan model. So this is what their GitHub page looks like. And here they also give a little breakdown of some of their benchmark scores. So over here, you're seeing that none of these models are open sourced except for Hanyuan's video model. And not only that, but it actually says that there are others which may be better in text alignment, but not by a significant margin. Now, when it comes to motion control, they say that they are actually the best, and I'll actually show you some examples as to why they're much better than some of the other video models coming out. And then also in terms of visual quality, even though they say they're not the best and Runway will probably produce a better video, it's again, not by a significant margin, just by about 2%. Now, the way that these videos were assessed was specifically based off of text alignment, motion quality, and visual quality. And they say that they use over 60 professional evaluators, though they don't give any details about those professional evaluators. So we're just kind of having to go off of their scoring right here. Now, I will say, though, as a person who has also used some of these other AI models in the past, Hanyuan's video model is one of the most impressive when it comes to visual quality and being open source at the same time. Now, we're not getting cinema grade quality yet out the gate, but it is a huge leap forward. Some of the things about this is that it does require 60 gigabytes of peak memory for 720 by 1280p videos at 129 frames, which for most professionals are gonna look at this and say, yeah, this is not gonna cut it. However, this is really just the beginning because I can only expect them to get much better from here. Um, so when I first saw this, I was actually thinking most people are not even going to get to touch this model because as you can see here, it says the model is tested on a single 80 gigabyte GPU and the 80 gigs here is referring to the VRAM, which most consumer grade graphics cards are just around eight to 16 gigabytes. Unless you have something crazy like a 4090, then you're probably looking at 24 gigs, which is still less than half of the required amount just to run this model. Except we do have some awesome developments from Kijai, who is like a godsend for the Comfy UI and open source community. He has already put out some wrappers that allow you to run this on graphics cards that are much smaller than the H100. So essentially you can run this model on your computer, albeit it will take a little bit more time. So let's go into looking at some of the results from these. And even though we don't prefer to use replicate and instead just run all of this locally, they do have some really awesome examples up here like the panning camera moves forward slowly with a depth of field in the middle focus and a warm sunset light covers the screen. The woman in the picture runs with her skirt fluttering, turns and jumps. So. I, I gotta say, based off of the way that this is looking, it's very impressive because, yeah, this, this definitely seems to have caught all of those details. And let's take a look at another example. My favorite of the entire bunch, and this is a car video. Just look at all of those camera motions, the details. Of course, parts of the car looked warped, and we have something that's like not the cleanest looking of videos, but the just amount of motion and movement in this is very impressive, and it looks like we're very close to getting something that is gonna be usable. Now. 
They also have some more examples up on the page. So I'm going to be leaving a link down in the description box so you guys can check them out. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. And on top of that, if you guys are Comfy UI users, we do have a Comfy workflow on our Patreon page. So you guys can go ahead, get to using that for yourself. It's going to look super clean and easy to use just like all of our other workflows. That way you guys can get to using this model, trying it out for yourself and seeing where it really excels. Some of the things that it struggles on. A really cool feature about this that I did notice is that it does handle text. So as you can see here, it not only has this ocean beach scene here, but it also has in the sand here written wake up which is very much legible, even though there's not too much physics going on with this. This was just released, very brand new, so we are gonna be doing a whole lot of testing to see where it really excels, but at the moment, these car cinematic shots look awesome. And another really cool thing that it's able to do is it can handle things like video to video. So thanks to Kijai's rapper here, for Hanyuan's video to work in Comfy UI, which is made by Kijai. Huge, huge thanks to Kijai for putting this out. It handles a lot of the prompts very, very well. He has a lot of optimized settings already. And one of the coolest examples that I saw was this one where it's actually using a video to video transfer. So here's what the base workflow looks like. And this example is awesome because here Kijai has taken a video clip of this car driving through a race in a desert rally based on the prompt of changing it to a high quality nature documentary scene of a bear running through a stream. You can see some of the physics going on with when the bear actually crosses into the stream. We have the water splashing around and yeah, this is amazing. So this is one of the examples as to why they consider their motion quality much better than some of the other models because it does handle that video to video motion much better than you would have seen with something like Runway where it just kind of applies almost like a little texture on top. If you guys enjoyed that video model coming out, then get ready to have your mind blown because there's something even more impressive. Even though it's not open source at the moment, Google DeepMind has just previewed their brand new Genie 2 architecture, which is their brand new large scale foundation world model. So what that means is that all of these video clips that you're gonna be seeing here are not actually running on a game engine, even though it looks like someone is playing a video game. And even though the user is able to interact with it using their keyboard to move forward, backwards, left and right, like they would any standard third person or first person video game. Instead, all of this is being generated on the fly using the AI. If image generation was like crawling and video generation is like running, then this is entirely different. This is like flying because this is not a video that you're looking at and this is not just an image to video transfer. Instead, this is an entirely simulated world complete with different characters, scenes, scenarios, interactions. And ideally they're thinking that this could be used for a whole lot of things in the future, but at its current state, it just shows a really huge leap forward with generative AI. So here we have some examples of Genie 2, where we have the prompt, a cute humanoid robot in the woods. And you can see it handles moving forwards, backwards, and it can even handle jumping using the space bar pretty well. Though we do see a little bit of its limitations start to show when the character moves left and we get this profile view or when it also moves right. Some of the warping it gets way more noticeable here. And yet a cool thing about this that's a little bit different from some of the other models that we've seen in the past is that it actually adheres to its environment. So we still have those same trees in the distance a better example that really shows this environment world building aspect of it is this humanoid robot in ancient Egypt, where you could really see the different perspectives of these pyramids when the character moves around. An even better example is this first person view of a robot on a purple planet. Now, even though it's showing the hands here, the main focus is looking at the environment and how the character can move through this environment without it completely losing its coherence. And then the best example of all for this is the first person view of a robot in a loft apartment in a big city, because we not only have the near view objects, which is this entire interior scene for the apartment, but we also have beyond the window, what looks to be an entire large scale city. And it doesn't seem to lose its perspective when the character even moves around the scene. So this is super huge and a great advancement when it comes to generative AI and interaction. Another really amazing example is where we have these water physics and the boat physics interacting. And it even changes when the character goes from driving this boat on water to then driving on land, really showcasing that difference in interaction. We also have this forest walking scenes. The reason why it's able to handle all this so well is because of its long horizon memory. So that means that 
things that are no longer in view, it's able to accurately bring them back when they need to be observable again. Yeah, and so these results are just looking super impressive. So my biggest gripe with all of Google's releases though is that unlike Meta or even Tencent in this case, all their stuff tends to be behind closed doors and once it finally gets released, it's very lackluster. So I wouldn't be surprised if something else comes out much better because we've already seen some pretty impressive stuff from the Dream Fusion model, which allowed a user to essentially recreate Counter-Strike without any game engine whatsoever. There were a lot of issues though with that model in that anytime a person was looking left and right, it would instantly just generate something new. Whereas this one, it at least allows a user to interact with its scene and its world in a very consistent manner. So very, very impressive. And then, so here are some more examples. We're looking at 3D structures, different object affordances and interactions with this character breaking these balloons. We even have uh, what looks to be a flammable can getting blown up. And then again, also it can handle various types of character animations from jumping, climbing, walking, whether they're a robot, a human, or even a cartoon character. Really where it does shine a lot is its physics models, specifically with its water effects. Another really impressive one is being able to play from real world images. So this is one of my favorite examples as well. So here they fed it a prompt with real world images. It's able to model the grass blowing in the wind or the water flowing in the rivers. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this could actually become useful in the future or is this just another Gemini release where it's actually not gonna be that impressive compared to everything else? Because again, these are some cherry picked results from a blog post. And until Google open sources some of their stuff, I think a lot of people are gonna be critical as well. These results look amazing, but I wanna know what you guys think. Do you guys think this is actually something that's gonna be implemented in game development? Can you see yourself playing a video game that gets generated on the fly? Or maybe just certain aspects of this will get ported over to tools like Unreal Engine. So maybe we're not just working with an entirely generated AI model, but instead a little hybrid approach between the two. I don't know. Seems like a lot of interesting developments and I'm not really sure exactly where people are gonna take it in the future. One thing though that they're very excited about is the AI agents acting inside of the world model. I know from earlier releases that they talked about using AI agents running in Minecraft to create an entire world and city and have all sorts of daily tasks and things like that. So NVIDIA has also been doing heavy research into running AI agents inside of video games. I could see at least that aspect in controlling and animating characters possibly getting incorporated, but we still have a long ways to go. So yeah, super exciting stuff, but there is a whole lot more that we gotta cover. Let's check out now the latest from OpenAI. This is gonna be the second day of 12 days of OpenAI. So if you guys missed the first day, what OpenAI released recently was their O1 and O1 Pro mode, which is a brand new model. So they actually did a very brief live stream, almost about 15 minutes where they covered some of the new features of O1 and O1 Pro mode. And comparing some of the results as well, you can see that it does much, much better and it's also much faster. I'm gonna leave a link down in that description so you guys can check out that video for yourself. They use an example where they have both models list Roman emperors of the second century, including their dates and accomplishments. And O1 not only responded faster, but it responded better with more detail. And then they even showed this example here where they have this complex physics problem that's just drawn out. Now, I don't know too much about the complex physics and what the radiator temperature choice is. However, I do know that they omitted one of the parameters from their physics problem, and O1 was not only able to identify the omitted parameter, but it was also able to estimate a realistic value for that parameter to allow it to finish calculating the result. So very exciting stuff because it's getting to the point where they're saying that the results and the answers from this are topping top level experts. O1 is available for their ChatGPT Plus and their pro mode is essentially gonna allow you to have unlimited access to it. But let's take a quick look at the pricing because the pro mode now costs a whopping $200. So I don't know about you guys, but $200 a month for unlimited access to O1 does not sound like such a steal to me because there are definitely a lot of really impressive open source models that have come out in the past. Let's take a look at some of the benchmarks from OpenAI's O1. Now, I would not always just trust their benchmark scores because again, it's them who's reviewing it and cherry picking results. Whereas if you do check out someone like Matthew Berman who has his tests, he tends to ask them the same questions each time and 
I like looking at those results. So I'm also gonna be leaving a link down in that description to his work because I think it's super dope. I'll also be leaving a link to the OpenAI system card so you guys can see their key areas of evaluation, their scorecard ratings. But I'm not really gonna dive into them too much here because yeah, we've, we've all seen OpenAI in the past do some very shady stuff. And in fact, I think they've pissed off a lot of the community by saying that they're open and not really having any open source models. Another huge news is that OpenAI managed to piss off a bunch of artists that were using Sora, so much so that they released a leak for their API access, so it's not actually a leak of the model itself. We don't get anything that we can use on our computers. However, people did get a more in-depth look at what the model was capable of and where OpenAI was lying a little bit. So this is a little bit of their manifesto where they say we are artists and not your unpaid research and development. We're not your free bug testers, your PR puppets, training data or validation tokens. And essentially they hated the fact that OpenAI gave about 300 artists access to this, but we're only gonna cherry pick some of the results and not let these artists really use it however they wanted to. Very sus, which makes you start to think, what does OpenAI not want you to see? And I think it's probably the fact that it's not the best video model or a world model as they were kind of describing it before, but instead a really great video generator. So the results do look pretty impressive, but it's not perfect. There's a lot more mess ups here than some of the ones that you may have seen before. A lot of really interesting stuff. And I'm thankful that someone managed to download these, upload them up to Twitter before OpenAI could scrub the internet clean and not really have too many people get their eyes on this. There's also some rumors going out that Sora may be released pretty soon, as in one of those 12 days for OpenAI. But yeah, at the moment it's not released. So only time will tell. I'm starting to think though that their introduction of the pro mode at $200 a month is probably because they are gonna to want to actually start charging a much more premium price point for releasing not just their ChatGPT-01 models, but also releasing stuff like Sora and some of their voice models as well. So only time will tell, but in the meantime, we're gonna be covering it. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the super dope stuff. And if you guys wanna get access to Hunyuan, which is an open source model, we're gonna be having a workflow up on our Patreon so you guys can download it use it and get to generating some really high quality videos on your local machines. Anyways, hope to catch you in the next one. Until next time, peace.